Folks, we have another amazing guest with us today on the Screen the Screener podcast. We have Coach Paul Biancardi, uh, former uh, coach at Wright State, at St. Louis, at Boston College in Ohio State, and he's currently ESPN.com's National Director of Recruiting. You can find him on Twitter at Paul Biancardi, B-I-A-N-C-A-R-D-I, and he joins us for a few minutes here. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? Fantastic. Uh, we are thrilled uh, to be able to talk to you about your college basketball and then what you're seeing on the recruiting trail for next year. I, I got to tell you, Coach, I, we feel here at the podcast that this has been one of the most exciting starts to the college basketball season. Uh, just get your take on the start to the season, these big matchups, and, and what you're seeing so far. Well, we all love the big matchups because we get a chance to see the best teams early go head-to-head and you know see who's really good and who's a, who's a contender and who may be a pretender and you also get a chance to to witness some of the teams and what they may be lacking early, and then the coaches have a great chance to correct that before the uh, league play starts. But because there's so many outstanding freshmen in college basketball spread around this year, they're not all at Kentucky and Duke, although Kentucky and Duke have outstanding freshmen. You see great freshmen at Washington, at UCLA, at Arizona, at Kansas, at North Carolina. So The talent is spread out, which is making our rankings in terms of the AP Top 25 confusing every week because we have a new number one team, it seems like, every week. Indiana has some great freshmen, some returners. Villanova is an older team, and and, and certainly they're the defending national champs. And There's so many teams right now that I think that you could argue that could be the number one team in the country. And I think if you try to pick a top ten right now, we could be talking about 20 teams for 10 spots. And I forgot about Gonzaga, who I have in my final four out west. They've been outstanding early this year. You know, that's a great call, Coach. My partner, Gus, has Gonzaga as well in the final four. We split. I took St. Mary's. He took Gonzaga. Why don't you touch on that a little bit? Because I know Washington with, with Markel Fultz, you can talk about him because you knew about him before anyone, is going to be playing Gonzaga. What are your thoughts on, on Washington, Gonzaga, and what you're seeing out there? Well, Washington's struggling, even though Fultz is outstanding. Nobody really has the size out west um, to match Gonzaga inside. you got you got Zach Collins, the freshman who can shoot it. He's a great pick-and-pop guy. you got Kownowski inside. I mean, nobody can handle him one-on-one. He demands double teams. And then you got some outside shooters. you got point guard play with Nigel Williams-Goss and Perkins. Uh, they have balance. They have size. And they're my team from you know the West, I think, that's going to make it to the Final Four. It could be a good game against Washington. Uh, Washington's going to have to step up their defensive play if they want to hang around because we saw what Gonzaga did to Arizona. Yeah, Coach, you know, the, the freshmen, too, it's a great point. The freshmen have made such an impact, and it's really been an evolution. You know, Calipari, you know, really made the push for the freshmen, but you're seeing it across the board now, and I feel like it peaked in that UCLA-Kentucky game. What a wonderful matchup that was. I mean – there were some, you know, Hamilton, of course, played a huge role. So did Welsh. She was in a little bit of foul trouble. But basically, TJ Leaf and Lonzo Ball, especially in the second half, really made an impact on that game, along with Fox, Adebayo, and Monk. So uh, just talk about those fresh. It's amazing how the freshmen really, and it's the beginning of the year, right, Coach? By the time we get to tournament time, the freshmen could be just universal, making a huge mark here. Well, they've impacted the game early. And you just mentioned five guys that are potential lottery picks in the upcoming draft if their season continues. Um, We talked about Lonzo Ball and T.J. Leaf. Lonzo Ball was a top five player in the class, and T.J. was in the top 12. We said those two guys, and also the big fellow they had in the back, the other freshman, uh, Ike, the shot blocker, would transform UCLA. We said that a year ago into one of the most improved teams in the country, and they've done it already. Steve Alford had a lot of returning pieces. In fact, they had all the returning pieces except for Tony Parker. So UCLA uh, looks like right now they could get to an Elite Eight or a Final Four, a long season to go. They're going to have to defend at a high level to get there. But we love this freshman class. We think it's deep, it's talented, it has star power. And we haven't even seen the number one player in the class yet, Harry Giles, who's expected to play soon for Duke. So... We've seen Josh Jackson and the impact at Kansas. The freshmen at Duke are outstanding, and Marquise Bowden is going to get better over time, the big fella. 
we don't even mention Jared Allen all that much. He was the number one center last year. He's at Texas. They're struggling a little bit because they don't have a point guard. Uh, this class has star power in the top ten, and it has star depth. Uh, we had a hard time trying to find the number one player in this class. There were three or four guys, freshmen, from last year who we thought could have been the number one player coming out. I think it was two years ago that we had uh, 14 freshmen declare for the NBA draft for the draft of 2015, and, and 13 made it, uh, drafted. The only one who didn't make it was Cliff Alexander. I think you're going to see that number broken in the 2017 uh, draft coming up this year. I really believe that. Wow. Uh, folks, we're talking to, to Coach Paul Biancardi, uh, National Director of Recruiting for ESPN.com, kind enough to give us a few minutes here. Coach, another one that sort of jumped off the screen at me because of the Alonzo Trier situation and, and all the uncertainty there was Kobe Simmons. And, you know, I remember reading on ESPN about how Kobe Simmons was looking like a Kentucky player, and then all of a sudden he's out in Arizona. He got off to a hot start and was scoring early. Um, you know, he's had some ups, ups and downs. What do you think his impact's going to be? And if Trier does come back, does that help him or hurt him? What do you think? Well, some freshmen, you know, don't want the pressure in the spotlight right away, and some can handle it. Most have to groom themselves as time goes on. Uh, Simmons now is forced into action uh, because they, they're out of point guard right now and they're out Trier. Right. So he's going to be forced into action. He, he's a transition-type point guard, which means he loves to go up and down, uh, go for steals defensively, and, and gamble a little bit, if you will. But he, he can keep, keep people in front of him, but he loves to go on the fast break as a facilitator or a guy who can finish. He's going to learn how to think the game and set up his team in the half court. That's going to be huge for Kobe Simmons. Sure, that's very true. And, and, and Coach, you're in the middle of it, right? You already not only have a handle on the players who are in college, but you can give us a heads up at, at some things that are coming uh, in the future. What, what are you seeing right now on the recruiting trail, names, places they're going, and some other people that you think uh, that we, th- we should keep our eye on here as, as we get into the season? Well, the class of 217 is better than we thought. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, the number one player in the class, is headed to Arizona, uh, the most mobile, skilled big guy that I've seen in my, my tenure at ESPN recruiting, uh, covering players. I haven't seen a center who could go outside and shoot it, put the ball on the deck, and also have a sweet post game, as well as being really mobile on the defensive end. And the number two player in the country, Michael Porter Jr., he's a six nine small forward. Just think Paul George. And he's headed to, believe it or not, Washington. So the Pac-12 have the two best players in high school basketball coming out next year. And Wendell Carter, the number one power forward, he's headed to Duke. He's an Elton Brand type. He's got great hands, terrific footwork, thick, strong body inside. And he's the number three player in the class headed to Duke. Uh, Kentucky's got four players already inside the top 50. Uh, they have the number one class, which is no surprise because under John Calipari, uh, Kentucky's had the number one or two class uh, during his time at Kentucky. So the, the blue bloods of the world are getting their players. But there's a, some other programs, just to mention real quickly, in the SEC, Auburn and Alabama have brought in outstanding classes. Alabama has a guard by the name of Colin Sexton. Remember that name, one of the most dynamic scoring guards in this class if not the most dynamic scoring guard. He's going to play for Avery Johnson. And they also have number 25, John Petty. So I think Alabama will have a a great backcourt next year and the ability to challenge maybe Kentucky at the top. Wow, that, that, that's a tremendous rundown. And, and these are the names, folks, in the future. Coach Paul Biancardi, he sees them before anyone else, and you're getting a preview here. It's great to hear, Coach, about the West because uh, my partner and I always talk about there's an East Coast bias. We're in the East Coast, but we love the West Coast. We're junkies. We stay up late. We tape the, we tape the games. We end up watching them. It's, it's really good for the balance to see across the board that there'll be some, uh, some big-time talent going to the West Coast. Yeah, and, and there's still a lot of players on the board, and I'll tell you what, the number one unsigned player is Mohamed Bamba. He's 6'11", with a 7'8 wingspan out of New York. So if you want to go back to the East Coast, uh, this guy can impact the game defensively, an outstanding shot blocker with length. He's looking at Duke. He's looking at Kentucky. He's looking at Harvard uh, amongst a lot of schools. So he's the highest-rated player right now that is unsigned in the ESPN 100. That's that's fantastic, folks. This is Coach Paul Biancardi. Gave us a kind of to give us a few minutes. He's going back out on the recruiting trail right now, getting information for us. 
Thank you, Coach, so much for coming on the Screen the Screener podcast. We look forward to following you on ESPN, following you on Twitter at Paul B. and Cardi, and hearing about these great players so that when we see him, we can say, hey, Coach, tell us about him a little bit earlier. So thanks so much for a few minutes here. We're honored to have you on. Well, I enjoyed it. Hope to come on again and love the name, Screen the Screener. It's a great concept. Appreciate it. We love, we're love. we vagabond junkies, Coach. That's what we're about. Great. Thanks so much, Coach. All right. Thank you. Take care.